All right, good morning everybody. Out here today at a spot I was at last week where I found a lot of little perch, so if the little perch is still holding, thought maybe it'd be fun to uh, match them with my ultralight rig. So I got a seven foot Daiwa Presso, size 20 uh, Kuma Trior um, spinning reel, and going super light, eight pound braid, I think 10 pound uh, leader here, the size eight uh, bait holder hook, and everyone's favorite, the two inch gulp camo sandworm. So simple Carolina rig, um, I kind of have an idea of where the spots are uh, from the last time I was out here. So let's see uh, what it's like putting a couple perch on an ultralight stick. All right, we're about, I don't know, two hours from peak high tide, maybe three hours. So definitely nice incoming tide. And there's a lot of sand crab uh, remnants all over the place. And I can kind of see them uh, bearing back into the water here. So this is a good sign. And I think there's a little trough in front of me. So, you know, perch always tend to bite a lot closer than you think. So I don't think I'm gonna have to cast too far to put myself on uh, some fish which is good because I can't cast far anyway with this thing. It's not really meant to be uh, put in the ocean, let alone the shore. Boom, first cast. Woo -hoo -hoo. Yeah, a little guy, really little. Good fight though, good fight. Everything's a good fight on this, uh, on this setup. Oh man, is he still on? Let's see. Oh, there you go. Woo yeah, look at that. First fish. First fish in the first 30 seconds here. Uh, yeah, that's about common for this size. Now, what I did was, let me see if I can show you guys. I put the hook in the back uh, two-thirds of the worm because I know their mouths are small, so they're going to be hitting it from the back, and I want that point as close as I can to the back because their mouths are so small. Uh, bigger perch just inhale these worms, but smaller perch tend to nip it from the back. Uh, that's why you'll get a lot of uh, bit off worms uh, if you're in an area with a lot of little perch. So first cast, first fish. We'll see if they get any bigger. All right, second cast. Now, I know that perch like to school uh, together. So where there's one fish, there's normally more. I'm gonna cast right back in the same little spot. And let's see if uh, another one hits it. All right, I'm gonna give this worm one more cast. Seems to be falling apart on me. And uh, my experience, once a worm starts curling up on itself, it just doesn't have the action that the fish like. So if I don't get anything on this hit, well, regardless, I'm gonna replace that worm with something fresh. Fresh worm. See if it does a trick. Just a slow, steady retrieve. I'm trying to bring that new worm right through the strike zone. Little guys, but a lot of fight with this little rod. That's what I was looking for. All right, let's not mess around. <laughs> They're getting smaller and smaller. All right, so something about putting on a fresh worm and making sure that the worm is nice and straight makes a big difference. If they're curled up, for whatever reason, the fish just don't hit it. So, you know, going to try to make sure that the worms stay straight uh, from, from now on. And uh, keep that point of the hook as far back in the worm as it'll hold. And they'll hit it because that's where they like to strike. Ooh, damn. That was a better one. That was a good one. I just missed them. Damn. I reset the worm on the hook, but because the worm was getting a little tore up, I had to put the point of the hook through the middle of the body. If I put it through the tail, like I said earlier, I'm sure I would have caught that fish. Oh, I 
got something? Snag. Sixty Mike. What is this? There's no fight. Must be a snag. Oh, what the heck? <laughs> Wow, I just caught a crab with an ultralight. Holy moly, I wonder if it's a keeper. Oh, female, okay. You know what? Okay, I just snared a Dungeness crab. And you know what? She looks close to being a uh, five and three quarters, which is the California legal limit. So check this out, guys. It's illegal to hook a crab and keep it but it's not illegal to put it down, walk away, and come back and pick it up. Uh, the law is pretty gray about what you can do uh, with a crab that's hooked. Uh, it doesn't say you have to toss it right back, it just says you can't keep it. So technically I could put it on the ground, walk away, give it, you know, 10 seconds to crawl back, come back over and pick it up. So, you know, you can harvest crabs if they're right at your feet, but you can't grab them uh, if you're, uh, you know, if you accidentally snared them with a hook. So not that I would keep this anyone anyway, it's a female, like to keep the population healthy so we're gonna let her go but if that was a big fat male i would have put it down on the beach walked away come back 10 seconds later and if he was still uh you know available to pick up i would have kept him so the law is kind of gray about what you can and can't do when it comes to uh picking up crabs as long as you put them down on the ground they're fair game just can't put them in your bucket Water does look better. It's feeling better too. Still on? Oh yeah, it's on. Another little perch. The dink fest continues. Woo! Woo! <laughs> All right. Need a thumbnail picture. Boom. Thanks for the fight, buddy. Tell your big boys to come over here. Okay, before I go, just a quick uh, product review. This is a seven foot Daiwa Presso. It's tied to a 2000 series Akuma Trior. I would not recommend it for the salt. In the future, if I try this again, I might go with a Pen Battle 2 size 1000, because that should hold up a lot better than this reel did uh, for ultralights or fishing.